I'd like to welcome you all to this morning's service, whether you're here in the church in person or whether you're listening later on to the recording of the service, is to have members of our church family join with us one way or another uh, this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, we're, we're going to look forward to hearing a, a recorded talk by uh, Stuart Lithgow, who has recently begun to work with the Open Air Mission. In recent years, we've occasionally had a visit from Alan Peel from the Open Air Mission, based in Liverpool. But now, Stuart is going to be based in our part of the world. He, he lives in Darwin. He'll be covering the area between, uh, between Bolton and Preston and, and Blackburn and, and Blunt Beyond. Uh, so we look forward later on to hearing his message. I've already heard it, and it's, 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 it's well worth listening to. Um, in fact, um, uh, uh, warning, this is a, a sort of a, a, a spoiler alert. If you don't know, uh, if you don't want to advance what Stuart says, close your ears now. But basically, he's going to be saying, talking about God, and the three P's, if you like. God is a God who keeps his promises. God is a God who answers prayer. And this is a God who has made the impossible possible. And our, our songs this morning are going to be following that sort of theme as well. And so to begin with, remember, remember the fact that we have a God who answers prayer. So whatever we're struggling with at the moment, whatever our burdens, we can bring all our needs to prayer. So uh, Margaret is going to pray, play through what a friend we have in Jesus. We we'll display the words on the screen, so even though we can't sing, we can be thinking about them and just, being, just remind ourselves that we have a God like that. What a friend we have in Jesus. We've been um, reminded of prayer in that opening hymn. Let's turn to God in prayer now, shall we? Lord God, we we do want to thank you that we can meet here this morning after so many months of being separated. Lord, it's good that at least some of us can be together today uh, in your house, worship you. Lord God, we worship you. Because we know from the Bible and from our own experience that you are a God who is great, who is uh, all wise, a God who is uh, pure and holy, completely perfect, a God who is good and right in everything he does. And Lord, we thank you that you're also a God who is good and merciful and loving. We thank you, Lord God, you, you see us, all our faults and failings, and you have compassion on us, and you care about us. We thank you, Lord, that you're the kind of God that we can pray to. 
believing, Lord, that you listen to every prayer, believing that you always give the best answer. And so today, Lord, as we gather together, I ask you'll help each one of us uh, to bring to you the burdens that we bear, the things that we struggle with, and to leave them with trusting, Lord, that you are able to handle every situation, that nothing is too hard for you. I pray, Lord, for, for those of us here and in, in, in our wider church fellowship and our friends and families and neighbours who are going through difficult times. You know, so many people are struggling for so many reasons in terms of their health, uh, in terms of loneliness, separation, uh, uh, as it have been dashed. Lord, we just pray for each one that they will find you all the help that they need. And Father, we pray especially today for uh, our royal family. Uh, Lord, uh, they're people like us. <clears throat> they grieve like us. Especially at the loss of someone who's been a part of their lives for so very many years. We pray for our queen. Thank you, Lord, for the real faith that she has in you. We pray, Lord, you will uphold her uh, now and in the months to come when she will, she will miss Prince Philip so much. We pray, Lord, for the other members of their family as well. As we often ask at a time like this, uh, Lord, it's a time that reminds us of uh, uh, things beyond this life, of eternity. We pray for our royal family that even at this time, there may be some who may find you in the midst of their grief. Lord, we, we commit this service to and ask, Lord, you will help us as we seek to worship you in spite of limitations and restrictions. Help us, Lord, as we listen to, to Stuart speaking from your word that we will, uh, we will listen and learn the things you want us to learn and to put them into practice day by day. So we ask your blessing now at this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Stuart is going to be talking about the fact we have a God who keeps his promises. The next hymn that, that we were to, to listen to now as we, we uh, uh, hear the recording of it is his faithful one. God can... Uh, before we listen to Stuart's talk, I thought it would be good to have, have a song for the younger ones as well. Uh, again, it's a song that fits in with this morning's theme, because uh, 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 the point that Stuart's going to make about the fact that we have a, a God who can make the impossible possible. And, uh, and we found a song which, which simply states the simple truth that with God, uh, nothing is impossible. With God, everything is possible. Now, for myself, uh, I, I, I just felt, I, 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 I felt tired just watching this. Uh, but uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. And if any younger ones would like to be able to listen to it at home and maybe learn the action, then just let me know afterwards and I'll, I'll send you the link. I, I did sway slightly from side to side in that song. That, that was my contribution. But anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, but those words are true. And, you know, it's one thing to, to listen to an enthusiastic song, but how about this week, whatever we might face? It might be good if God reminds us from time to time this week with the challenges that, that we've got on our plate at the moment in various ways, that with God, nothing is impossible. With him, everything is possible. Uh, we're going to hear the talk now from, from, from Stuart Lithgow. As I say, he's, he's joined the Open Air Mission to do open air uh, preaching in, in, uh, in, in our area, this, this area of South Lancashire. So uh, uh, I'll, let it, I'll let him introduce himself, say a bit about his work, and then bring us a message from the Bible. Hello, my name is Stuart Lithgow and I'm one of the staff evangelists working for the Open Air Mission. Um, I'm working uh, locally in Lancashire, um, Lancashire born and bred, um, and so I've got in touch with yourselves um, to tell you a little bit more about um, the work that's planned, uh, Lord willing, um, and also to bring a small message. So I began Open Air work um, 20 years ago now. Um, and I've carried on open air work uh, throughout the years since that time. I began uh, on a beach mission, United Beach Mission, in Clan Ludno, um, where I went, went out and was prompted by the leader um, to do uh, an open air talk. Uh, I was only recently saved and very recently baptised, my first beach mission, um, and I was terrified. So the leader asked me if I'd be willing to do an, op uh, an open air talk and reluctantly at first I was cajoled into doing it shall we say and um, as the week progressed I felt the Lord leading me to speak on the lifeboat so 
Um, we went out, a friend and I, on the beach team. We found the RNLI lifeboat station on the, uh, the pier and purchased a, a book about um, the lifeboat and many different events where people had been saved. I chose one of those um, events from the history of the lifeboat, the Khan Dunno lifeboat. Um, and as time was progressing, felt really that the Lord was leading me to speak on that subject. So as the week had progressed, we came uh, to setting up the board on the beach on the Thursday. And lo and behold, the, the lifeboat was on the beach ready um, for the talk that God had prepared me to do uh, throughout that week. So I spoke on the lifeboat. There were many people listening. Um, and that was my first experience of open air preaching. Um, since then, I've done many years of open air work, as I said. Um, and I uh, have done street preaching. I've done door to door work. I've done one to one evangelism through questionnaires or just basically giving out tracts and striking up conversations. Um, and through this time, God has brought me to work for the open air mission. Uh, as one of the staff evangelists. And so I'm planning at the moment, uh, according to the Lord's will, to begin a number of works throughout the North West, one of which will be um, in Bolton. Um, I've open air preached in Bolton before. It's an excellent site uh, to enable open air preaching. Uh, and so I want to just introduce the plans for this work just a little bit. Um, when lockdown lifts, uh, the aim is to get out. Uh, and start open air preaching in Bolton uh, and so consequently as part of the foundational work um, for beginning those open airs in the different areas I'll be going all throughout the northwest from uh, Lancaster all the way over to Burnley uh, the different sites that I'm thinking of doing I'm local so I'm born and bred in Wigan currently living over uh, Blackburn Way uh, and so I'm looking throughout the northwest in the ways that we can begin open air work um, and to tell people about the gospel of Jesus Christ and so and call them to repentance that they may have life in his name so uh, this video is as I say a little bit of an introduction uh, to introduce myself what uh, I'm doing for the open air mission and the plans that I have under the open air mission uh, to bring the gospel to many people in different areas um, and so what I want to just do is move on um, and just consider the word of God with you briefly um, Maybe slightly unusual, doing it by video. Uh, I don't know how you do it currently. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now what I wanted to do very briefly is just consider these words that um, the angel says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And there are three things that I'd like to consider. We ask the question, why is that so? Because obviously God being God created the world. But there are three specific things that we should consider um, in this passage and how they apply to us. So the first thing is he is a God of promise. So with God, nothing 
will be impossible. Now God had promised long before that a Messiah would come and that he would save not only the Jews from their sins, his people, but also the Gentiles. And so this is the fulfillment of a promise that God made um, right back at the beginning, that he would save his people from the effects of sin and that he would save them so completely that they would dwell with him again. And so as um, the promise is given to Mary through this angel, uh, she says, Uh, the angel says that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And we see that God is a God of fulfilled promises. So we often um, make promises, we often fail. Um, And consequently, we've got to consider that God is always true to his promises. He never fails anyone on any promise that he makes through his word. And so... As we consider that for ourselves, as a God of promise, he has said that he will build his church. And so we may look around at the world that we see around us currently. We may, in one sense, be in despair and wonder what is going on. The world, you may think, is going downhill fast. Or your personal circumstances may be very difficult. Or your church circumstances may be very difficult. I don't know what your circumstances are. But one thing I know is that God is a God of promise. And therefore, we should cling to the promises of God. Because, as the angel says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Now, the second thing is that God is a God who answers prayer. Now, if you look at um, verse 13, um, Zacharias is uh, in the temple. And an angel appears to him. um, And it says, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Now, it's amazing enough that God comes to a virgin, and that she conceives, and that child that she conceives is the promised one of God, the one who will save his people, whether from the Jews or from the Gentiles, from their sins. But before that, God also goes to a a barren couple, and they conceive a child in their old age. And the angel comes and says to John, for your prayer is heard. As we live again in the generation in which we're in, you may be able to look back on what seemed to be better times, times when the actions of God were more prevalent, when churches were more full, where maybe your own life was in a different set of circumstances. And yet even now, as you... Think about these words, for with God nothing will be impossible. God is a God who answers prayer. And these are the words to Zechariah, for your prayer is heard. If you're a believer today, if you have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. And every prayer that you pray is heard. And however difficult that prayer may seem, maybe it's that the church would be built up either in your circumstance or more generally. It may be that God would roll back some of the evil things that have been brought into law in our country. Maybe it's more personal. Maybe it's your own circumstances that you have been praying for a loved one, a friend, a relative, a son or a daughter, or even a husband or a wife, and parents in some cases. Maybe you've been praying faithfully for many years, And you wonder, does God still hear prayer? Does he hear your prayers? And the thing is that all of your prayers are heard. And God is a faithful God. And he is a God of promise, as we've said. But he is also a God who answers prayer. Keep praying. And you can hold on to these words and pray them as one of the promises of God. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And let us hope and pray that God will save that person or those people who you've been praying for for many years. Or he will do those things that we as his people desire that he would do. Rolling back the evil that seems to be progressing in our own country or throughout the world. And that his name will be high and lifted up. But as we consider those two things we also have to remember that very simply, he is the God who can do the impossible. In um, Matthew's gospel, 
chapter 28. Uh, sorry, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 23 to 26. Uh, we read a different circumstance. Uh, a rich young man comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to be saved? And the man goes away, sorrowful. And Jesus says, assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? Do we sometimes ask that question? But Jesus looked at them, this God, and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. He is the God for whom all things are possible. Whatever it is that troubles you, whatever it is that you see as a difficulty, remember that God is the God of the possible. He's a God of promise. He's the God who answers prayer. And he is the God who makes the impossible possible. And as we've said, are you concerned for a loved one, a family member? Are your own personal circumstances in great difficulty? Are your church circumstances of great difficulty? Don't give up praying. Remember that this God is the God who answers prayer, fulfills his promises, and makes the impossible possible. Now, as I come to you, I'm someone who believes firmly in the power of God to salvation for those who believe and as you're listening now you may not be someone who knows this God this God of promise this God who answers prayer and this God who makes the impossible possible are you someone who thinks could God ever save someone like me could God ever change my circumstances that I would honor him and glorify him as you listen today, it's very simple. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. How can a person be saved? Is the question that the disciples asked. Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them. And as I look at you today, these words from Jesus could apply to you. If you're yet to turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. If you turn from your sin today and simply trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he has done everything on your behalf for you to be saved. And as I speak to you now, you, if you haven't turned, need to know that there is a day when God will judge the world in righteousness through this same man. You've got an opportunity now, today, to turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You may not have that opportunity tomorrow, but be thankful that God has given you today. And what else to those who have turned and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved? I desire to go out onto the streets to share the gospel with whoever I can share the gospel with. And all I want to do is to ask, firstly, that you would pray. That you would pray that God will honour his own name as I and others like me seek to go out and to make Jesus known. We know that the gospel has the power to turn around not only towns, villages, cities, but also nations. There was a time when it turned the world upside down. And we pray as we go forth in obedience and faith that it would do the same again. We are weak, feeble uh, and failing men at times. And yet our God is the God of the impossible. The one who can make all things possible according to his will. And so as I finish I want to simply say his, um, the words from Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20. We desire that God's name would be made known. And that we can be involved in the making of disciples as evangelists. And so Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. My friends, this is our God. This is the one who is with us and has commanded us, as he does now, to go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Why? And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And as Jesus spoke those words, they speak to our situation now. God is the God of the possible. Only the one who created the world by the power of his word can turn men from sin to salvation, from darkness to light. And he has sent me forth to proclaim that gospel on the streets. And as you listen today, I pray, if you haven't done already, that you would turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a believer, please pray alongside us um, and engage in any way that you're able to, either in prayer or taking our prayer letters, whatever it may be, and be involved in the work that we're seeking to do in whatever way you can so that the gospel can go forth and God's name will be praised. Thank you for listening. Okay, let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for calling Stuart to this area at this time. We ask you to help him as he surveys the opportunities in, in different towns. We pray, Lord, that soon uh, the legislation will, will be relaxed to the point where he's able to, uh, to preach in different prominent places and, and gather crowds to hear your word. We ask your blessing upon his ministry. We thank you, Lord, that we don't depend upon the, 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 the clever words and, and speaking abilities of, of, of any person. We depend, Lord, upon your power. And thank you, Lord, that you are a God with whom nothing is impossible. All things are possible. We pray, Lord, for the area where we live. We pray for the, the town of Bolton. We pray for our own town of Horwich. And, Lord, we look around and, and sometimes we feel there's so little interest in the things of God. But again, we thank you, Lord. You are a God who, who answers prayer. You are a God who can do the impossible. So we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon Bolton. We pray for your blessing upon uh, this town of Horwich. We pray for your blessing on the, the towns around Wigan, where, where some of us come from. And, and Lord, we, we pray that you, uh, who, to, for whom nothing is too hard, that you will send your spirit to the area where we live. And again, give people an awareness that God is real, that sin is real, and that they will turn to you while they still have the opportunity. Lord, please send revival uh, even to our uh, area, to our town, into our lives. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And our final hymn is, is a prayer, reader that God will restore the honour of his name. That he'll, he'll restore, uh, send revival in our nation, and he'll, and, and he'll restore uh, our church and our lives. So as we listen to this, let's make it our prayer. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you again next week.